If you have ever watched any of the series of Star Trek, you might have heard the term Class M Planet, but have you ever wondered what this means? As you may expect with things in the Star Trek universe, Class M is not just a random phrase that characters toss around. While this isn't based on something in real life, it is similar to the OBAFGKM Star Classes in that it's actually a whole chart of different types of planets, and it's not just Class M. Class A, B, and C planets are all younger planets. Their class depends on their age and solidity of their cores. Class D planets don't really have too much going for them. Some good analogs for Class D worlds are the Moon, Mercury, and Pluto. Basically, small planetoids, moons, or even asteroids with little to no atmosphere. Livability rating? 0 out of 10, but at least the rent is cheap. Classes E, F, and G planets are simply described as proto-Earth-sized planets. Whatever that means. Class H planets are described on Minary Alpha as generally uninhabitable. Tau Sigma 5 is a good in-universe example. They're incredibly hot and arid, like Vulcan, but to the power of Arizona times Dubai. Class I planets are gaseous supergiants, such as Wasp-17b, one of the largest planets we've yet found. Class J planets are one type of gas giants. They're between 50,000 and 140,000 kilometers in diameter, and are located in the colder zone of a system. Class K worlds are uninhabitable, but they can easily be inhabited with pressurized domes. Some in-universe examples include Mud and Theta-8. Class L planets support life, but generally just vegetation and not much in the way of animal life. A good comparison is the landmass of planet Earth around 450 million years ago in the Silurian period, when plants are first evolving and making scratches on land, and no animals lived on land yet. Class M, coming from the Vulcan word Minshata, and thus known as the Minshata class worlds, are like Earth, Vulcan, Organia, Romulus, Kronos, Bajor, or other planets that support complex humanoid or even intelligent life forms for long periods of time. Some of which probably evolved on that planet. Plus N planets are sulfuric worlds with extremely high surface temperatures, due to a runaway greenhouse effect, similar to Venus or Arizona. Do not get Class M and Class N confused. Class O worlds are completely or almost completely covered in water, like Lathes from Kerbal Space Program, which could also count as Class L. Class P are like Class O worlds, but more frozen. Think of Jupiter's moon Europa. Class Q worlds are planets whose environments are continuously changing at such a rapid fire rate, geologically speaking, that they can't really be described in any one class. They are rapidly changing, sort of like the Q. Class R planets are rogue planets, which are planets that don't orbit a star. This is actually a real-life phenomenon, likely caused by either a planet escaping from its home star, or a planet that has survived the death of its home star. It's likely that all the planets beyond Earth's orbit will share this fate after the sun dies in 5 billion years. Class S are gas giants between the size of Class J and Class T. Class T is another classification for gas giants. The difference between Class T and Class J is never described, but one source says that Class T worlds are large ultra giants, with a diameter of between 50,000 to 120,000 kilometers, in an age of 2 to 10 billion years. Finally, Class X, Y, and Z planets are described as demon worlds with toxic atmospheres and extremely high surface temperatures. Life can still be found on the surface, though, just not life similar to Earth's. Now that we know the classes mean, here's a severely not scale image of the solar system. Can you guess what class each planet falls into? Okay, I'm bored, here are the answers. Thanks for watching, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for to learn something new every Sunday. Let me know if you want more of these Star Trek related videos, and I will see you next Sunday.